we're going to discuss some investing basics for people starting out with as little as $100 to invest. In this video, we're going to discuss a number of potential investment options. This is not intended to be an exhaustive list. These aren't all the options that are available to you. But these are most of the basics and most of the options that are available for people starting out with just a small amount of money. In order from least risk to most risk, we'll discuss savings accounts, certificates of deposit, savings bonds, investing in precious metals, investing in your own business or conducting arbitrage, exchange traded funds, real estate investment trusts, investing in individual stocks, and we'll touch on cryptocurrency. This isn't going to be a complete everything you need to know video. This is really just an introduction. We'll get in depth more later. Starting with savings accounts. Savings accounts are a very traditional investment vehicle. They are very safe and they're very liquid, which means you can get to your money very easily, which can also be a disadvantage because it can be hard to resist the temptation to pull that money out if you want to go and spend. Another disadvantage of savings accounts is that they have very low interest rates and you're not going to beat the rate of inflation, which means at the end of one year, any money that you've put into the account will not only have not gained very much, but will actually buy you less than it would have when you put it into the account at the start of the year. Certificates of deposit are a little bit more secure than a savings account. They are very safe and they have slightly higher interest rates, not vastly higher. But the interest rates are still too low to beat inflation and the money is completely unavailable to you until the CD matures. The way a certificate of deposit works is you set aside some amount of money, typically $500 or $1,000, though sometimes less, and you tell the bank that they can hold on to it for a specific period of time, oftentimes six months, 12 months, or more. And then depending on the amount of time that you let them hold on to your money, they will pay you a certain interest rate each year. And while that interest rate is guaranteed growth, it's usually not very large. And you can't get your money out, at least not easily, until the certificate of deposit matures. So you have limited options. Savings bonds are extremely safe. This is similar to a certificate of deposit in the sense that you're giving an institution your money to, to invest on their own. But in this case, the institution you're giving your money is the US government. Again, the interest rates on savings bonds currently are extremely low, which means that these aren't a good investment vehicle for any real period of time because you're going to lose money to inflation. And again, you have to wait for the bond to mature to get the full advantage of the bond. While it is easier to get out of a bond than it is to get out of a CD, you will have really wasted your time if you don't let the bond fully mature. A lot of people like to invest in precious metals, things like gold and silver. Precious metals have a number of advantages. They're very, very safe. Historically, they hold their value very well, meaning that they stand up to inflation really well. In the 1930s, an ounce of gold was worth about $20. And in the 1930s, $20 would buy you a really nice suit of clothes. Today, an ounce of gold is worth closer to $2,000, and $20 today will not buy you a very nice suit of clothes. So that gives you an idea of how gold holds its value. One ounce will buy you the same thing today it bought you in the, a long time ago. 
and cash does not necessarily hold its value as well. Gold has the advantage of not being reliant on a, on a bank or a broker. You can buy it, put it in a safe, bury it in your backyard, do anything you want with it, you have complete control over it. Gold, like cash, is fungible, which means your gold bar is worth the same thing as someone else's gold bar, and you can trade them, and they're worth completely the same. There's no sort of extra value added for them being specially crafted or having any sort of artistic embellishments. Some of the disadvantages of gold are that it's easily lost or stolen. It's easily lost when you're buying very small amounts, which you would be in this case, much less than an ounce. And again, it's easily stolen. A lot of people like to think that they're going to buy gold to protect themselves when you know society collapses or whatever and the dollar isn't worth anything anymore and they think oh i have this gold i'll still be able to buy stuff that's not really true the reality is somebody will just punch you in the head and take your gold and then you won't have gold or stuff gold is also very expensive so again for a small amount of money you're only going to get a really tiny amount of gold and you can get a little bit more silver, but silver doesn't have quite the same value as gold. And it's also hard to sell at full value. When you buy gold, you're going to buy it at a markup because the person selling it wants to make a profit. And when you sell gold, unless you sell it to another private party, which is hard because you have to find someone who's looking to buy a gold bar, you're likely going to sell it at somewhat less than market value because the places that buy gold, again, want to make a profit. One often overlooked option is investing in your own business. Even with as little as $100, you can invest in your own business. There are a lot of businesses that you can engage in today that don't have a lot of startup costs and can make you enough money that you could very easily double or triple a $100 investment. If you're very young and just starting out, you could do stuff like dog walking, mowing lawns in your neighborhood. You could start a YouTube channel. If you buy a decent microphone, a camera, you have something to talk about, you can get monetized on YouTube, spend some time blogging, writing online, those are all realistic options for very low investment that you can do to earn additional cash so that you have more to invest in other vehicles later in time. And this last thing that I wanted to talk about is called arbitrage. Arbitrage is when you buy or acquire something at a low price or no price and then sell it at a higher price. And so what I mean here is you can go on websites like Buy Nothing or the free listings on Craigslist where you can drive around your neighborhood and look at things that people have left out on the curb and you will often find items that people are giving away for free that you can very easily resell oftentimes on the same sites that you found them. So you can get a free item off of a Craigslist listing, and then you could sell it on the community page, on the, on the Facebook community page, for even a few dollars, it's all profit. Traditional arbitrage is when you buy something for a low price and either fix it up or just resell it. One really popular form of arbitrage is white appliances. A lot of people are getting rid of things like white refrigerators, white dishwashers, white stoves, and they're quote-unquote upgrading to stainless steel or some other fancier looking appliance. These appliances can often be resold on community sites or Craigslist or other online selling sites for a substantial increase over what you paid for it because people who are either renting or who just don't have 
a lot of money to spend on an appliance, but they need a new refrigerator now because they're just broke, will pay you to get these basic white appliances. And some people make an entire living just buying and selling white appliances. Now we're getting into what you probably were thinking of when you asked about investing, which is the stock market. And the first thing I want to talk about is exchange traded funds. Exchange traded funds have a number of really important advantages. The biggest one being built-in diversity. If you buy an exchange traded fund, you're not buying one stock, you're buying a portfolio of stocks. You're buying a small piece of a whole lot of stocks. So if you were to buy, say, a, a, an index fund that tracks the S&P 500, what you're actually getting is a very small piece of every share of stock in the top 500 companies that are tracked by the S&P, which is the largest stock market in the United States. So you get built-in diversity, which means your investment's a little bit safer because you're not putting all your eggs in one proverbial basket. Uh, they also have the advantage that exchange-traded funds most of them do pay dividends. They'll either pay dividends in the form of cash or a form of automatic reinvestment that increases uh, the amount of money that you have invested in the exchange traded fund so you have more shares over time. There's a low to moderate level of risk depending on what the market is doing at the time. But basically your, your risk matches whatever the risk of the market is. And historically, over any 10 to 30 year period, the stock market averages between seven to 10% returns, which is a really healthy return. Another advantage of exchange traded funds is that they trade like stocks, which means you can buy them and sell them on an app like Robinhood or from a brokerage like Vanguard or Fidelity, and you can buy them and sell them just like a stock. Some disadvantages are that they probably will provide less gains than certain other stocks. So if you're looking to make an investment like a, a GameStop where you're hoping to go all in on a stock that you think is going to the moon, you're not going to get that kind of upside trend from an exchange traded fund. But you will get more security. And it, while exchange traded funds do pay dividends, they typically pay lower dividends than individual stocks that pay a dividend. Real estate investment trusts also are bought and sold like stocks, except instead of buying shares in a company, you're actually buying shares in real estate holdings. This is by far and away the easiest way to invest in real estate. Most real estate investment trusts own large commercial properties like shopping malls or large office buildings, and they take in the rents and revenue from those buildings, and they pay 90% of their net income out as dividends, which is great. However, it's also a disadvantage because since they're paying out 90% of their net income as dividends to the shareholders, that means they have very little money to reinvest in growth, which means real estate investment trusts often don't grow quite as quickly in value as stocks do. Another disadvantage is that real estate investment trusts are taxed as ordinary income. So they don't have the lower tax rates that you get with long-term stock investments. Individual stocks. Some advantage of buying individual stocks, and so by individual stocks, I mean buying shares in a single company. So buying like one share of Apple or one share of Ford. 
The advantages are you know exactly what you owe. With an exchange-traded fund, you own a basket of, sh of stocks. And yes, you can look up and see what stocks are included in that fund. However, a lot of them are probably going to be companies that you may have never heard of. With an individual stock, you will know exactly what company you own and how much you own of it. Depending on what company it is, an individual stock may or may not pay dividends. If it is a dividend-paying stock, it's going to pay a higher dividend than something like an exchange-traded fund. And you have a higher potential for gain because the same diversity that makes an exchange-traded fund a really good option because it makes it safer also means that it kind of limits the overall gains of the fund because in an exchange traded fund you're going to have some number of stocks that are moving up and you'll have some that are moving down and you get the average. With individual stocks again if you're looking at something like a GameStop where you're expecting it to go to the moon you're going to get the full advantage of that upside. However you also have a greater chance for loss. So if your stock tanks, then you're going to take the full brunt of that as well. Another disadvantage of investing in individual stocks is that it really does require more attention and more research if you're going to do it well. If you really care about making an educated investment, then you have to Take some time and do research. You have to make sure that you understand a little bit about the company, a little bit about the business that they're in, and a lot about their financial situation. And then you have to make a decision as to whether or not you think that company is going to be a good investment. And because stocks have a greater chance for loss, you also have to keep your emotions in check. So what I mean by that is if you're checking on your stock account every single day and your stock is having a bad day and you see it going down, maybe it's having a bad week and you've been watching it go down day after day after day, you're going to be really tempted to dump that stock. You're going to say, you know what, this thing is... It's going down, I'm losing money, I got to get out of this thing. You're going to sell it, and, you're gonna, and oftentimes you're going to wind up selling at a loss. Everyone knows the common wisdom of buy low and sell high. But for some reason, when it comes to stocks, people tend to buy high and sell low because they're really afraid of losses. When you're investing in the stock market, you have to remember that this is a long game. Stock market value is measured in years or decades, not days and weeks. Day traders almost always wind up losing money. Last but not least, We'll touch on cryptocurrency. So, yes, cryptocurrency can be an investment, and it does have some advantages. It's decentralized, which means no single government controls it, and no single government can regulate it. There are huge potential gains. It protects you from inflation, just like gold does. And it's also very private, meaning there are, there are no records of Bitcoin transactions or Bitcoin investments that are easily traced back to the buyer. However, some of the disadvantages are, while there are huge potential, uh, while there's a huge potential for gains, there's an equally huge potential for losses. You could very easily lose 
100% of your investment. And while that is technically possible with stocks as well, it's much less likely unless you're investing in something like penny stocks. And we'll talk about that another time. Cryptocurrency is also not easy to convert back into what they call fiat currency, or what you might think of as regular money, US dollars. It's real easy to get US dollars into cryptocurrency, but getting the cryptocurrency back into US dollars is a little trickier. Cryptocurrency is also susceptible to hacking and fraud. There are a lot of bad actors on the internet who are actively targeting people who are new to cryptocurrency and scamming them out of their money. There are a lot of cryptocurrency exchanges that people use, sometimes very famous exchanges that people think are really reputable and they wind up going out of business and everyone who bought cryptocurrency with them winds up losing their investment. Which brings me to the last disadvantage. There are no protections. Just like there's no sort of regulation from the government, there's no protection from the government. If someone defrauds you, no one's coming to help you. There are some other investment options that we're not discussing today but that you may have questions about. Those include stock options. You may have heard about those being discussed a lot during the whole GameStop uh, rise. Forex or foreign exchange is when you invest in foreign currencies, kind of like cryptocurrency, but instead of buying Bitcoin or Dogecoin or Ethereum, you'd be buying euros or yen or yuan, or some other foreign currency. And you hold on to that foreign currency and hope that in time, you'll be able to trade it back for more US dollars than you spent to get it. Binary options, you'll sometimes see commercials for these on TV or online. That's really just a form of betting on stocks. It's not really an investment. And peer-to-peer -peer lending. Peer-to-peer -peer lending is a legitimate form of investment and can be a really good option for someone starting out with low amount of money to start. However, it's just complicated enough that it probably warrants its own video, as do all of these other options. So like I said, this is just an intro. This is just a start to the discussion. We can talk more later. Let me know what questions you have. Let me know what you think.